So this is what the ultrasonic sensor looks like. I'm going to now jump over to the PC. This is already connected here. I'm going to jump over to the PC and go through all the same steps that you need to do in the exam. So in the exam, again, you're going to need a block diagram, pseudocoder flowchart, Fritz and circuit diagram, and you're going to need to explain the pin connection. So I've connected mine here. You're going to have to explain how you've connected it. So first things first, we have our parts list and justification. Now in activity three of the exam, this is something you must do. So for every single component you have in your system, you have to state how many components you have, the name of the component, and then justify. So explain why you've chosen to use that component. The first one is the Raspberry Pi Pico. This is going to always be along the lines of, this is a microcontroller I'm using. It has I2C and SPI uh, communication interfaces. I can program this using Python. It's low powered, it's cheap, it's very small. Whatever reason, um, which made you choose the Raspberry Pi Pico over, let's say, the normal Raspberry Pi or over, let's say, the Arduino Uno, Arduino Mega, the PIC microcontrollers, the Embed, whatever your reasons are for choosing the Raspberry Pi Pico, you state that here. Now, for this one, I'm using the ultrasonic sensor because this one is going to be, I don't know, let's say, parking sensor, right? So the parking sensors that we have in our cars nowadays is normally going to be the ultrasonic sensor, very cheap device, very easy to program, very easy to replace, um, very easy to integrate with other systems because it's so small and so cheap and so wide, widely used as well. We're going to use the LED for using, uh, what's the LED for again? The LED is going to be a visual representation of what happens. So let's just say my distance is less than 10 centimeters or less than 20 centimeters and the LED should go on and that's going to give me a visual aid to say, okay, maybe I shouldn't reverse anymore. And then the resistor, as we know, limits the amount of current going into any particular device so that it doesn't overpower or burn that device out. Next, we have the block diagram. And to do that, I recommend in the exam using PowerPoint. Very, very simple. Simply right click, go to new, go to PowerPoint or however you decide to create one. I'm going to call this uh, diagrams and double click on that to open it. The block diagram only needs to show the input, the processing and output. So I'm going to just put my input. So go to insert, go to text box, my input device or input devices, because it could be more than one. You don't just have to have one input device. So for the 2022 pass paper, for example, uh, January, I believe you would have a stop button or an emergency stop. And you would also have the magnetic sensor checking. So both those things would be inputs. We have processing, uh, uh, that's processing. And finally, we have the output as well. This is going to be over here. And again, these are the devices which show us or let us know what's happening inside the system. So sound, visual aids, whatever. So go back to insert. I'm going to go to shapes, rounded rectangle. My input device in this case is going to be ultrasonic sensor. Processing is going to be Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, Raspberry Pi Pico. Now you can change this to whatever microcontroller you are using. And finally, I'm going to have my output as I'll just use an LED for this just to say maybe I'm too close. So I'll just flash the LED or turn it on. And that's it. I need to now go insert shapes and do elbow arrow connect these devices like so change the weight to about four and a half so I can see it copy paste and simply connect these as well done that's my block diagram done took me two minutes copy this screenshot it go back to my word document and paste it in here that's my block diagram finished my system is supposed to detect whether well, the distance is let's say less than 10 centimeters and if if it is less than 10 centimeters then maybe turn the led on so we're going to do a uh, start so we start the program now it's supposed to be caps caps lock normally it doesn't really matter start we're supposed to say input and we're gonna get reading from sensor we don't know what the reading is and we don't care at this point it's only when we get to the if statement so we're going to say if it's supposed to be caps lock if a uh, distance is less than let's say 15 centimeters if distance is less than 15 centimeters then I'll put the then under here then turn led on then i can also say elif or if again elif or an if statement is fine distance is uh greater than I don't know 15 centimeters again then turn led 
off. Now, this is a very simple one. This is never going to be the case where it's either going to be less than or greater than 15 because if that's the only thing we're checking for, it's not going to be a very accurate sensor. We want something that checks multiple things. So maybe if it's greater than 30 and then if it's uh, greater than 20 but less than 30 and then if it's less than 20 and then if it's less than 10, you want to have multiple checks. But for the purpose of this, let's keep it very simple. And then I can say else. This is the last condition. Uh, we could just say uh, print or output actually, output, there was an error because this is a very simple system. So this is how I might do my pseudocode for this single device. And then maybe here I can do end or stop, whichever one works for you. Now flowchart is going to be the interesting one. Again, it's going to be just this very simple thing here. And to do that, I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. I'm going to create a new slide. I'm going to grab all the stuff I need first. So insert shapes. I'm going to grab a rounded rectangle for the start and stop. Then I'm going to grab insert shapes. Uh, this for process. Then I'm going to go insert shapes. I'm going to grab the input output one. Then after that, insert shapes. I'm going to grab decision. I think that's all I need for now. Copy this one. And I'm going to say start. This is where my program actually makes a start. And the first thing it's going to do is to get some input from the sensor. So I'm going to have that one. That's an input shape. Uh, get sensor value. Oh, sorry. Get sensor value. That's an input there. After getting sensor value, we then check this value against a number. So I'm going to say if, if value is, what did I say? Greater or less than 15, whichever one works. If value is greater, let's say less than 15, that's the decision. And then the output is supposed to be turn LED on. So I'm going to copy this, paste it over here. I'm going to say LED on. I'm going to do the same check again down here. And this time I'm going to say LED off. Now, the reason why we have two checks, let me go to insert and do text box. We have two checks because this is going to be the yes condition if that check is yes, if this is less than 15. We should also have a no condition. So if it's not less than 15, it goes and does another check. So this can be no. Now, typically speaking, you don't really need to do another check. You could just say else. So if it's less than 15, do this thing. Otherwise, do the other thing because we only have two conditions. But just for the purpose of this, I might as well show it. And then down here, I'm going to say that's for yes as well. And after that, I'm just going to say end. Or this could be a while loop, actually. You could put all of this in a while loop. But again, let's keep it simple. This is only going to run once. I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to go to shape, elbow arrow, which is that one there. Draw from there to there. Make the weight of that one. So go to shape format, shape outline. Make it maybe four and a half, whatever you can see. Copy that. Let's connect that one to this one. And then after that, let's connect this one to that one. Same thing again. All I'm doing here is connecting all the devices, well, all the sections together so it makes sense, really. That one to that one. And finally, I go to end. So this is my flowchart. Simple, very stupid simple, but let's screenshot this. And uh, let's put this in our Word document now. Flowchart here, fritzing circuit diagram. So I think I have a template for my fritzing diagram. So I'm going to go make go ahead and make use of that. Uh, default Pi, here we go. So I'm going to double click on this. This already has my Raspberry Pi on there. But the first thing you're going to need to do in most cases, is go over to your parts bin, very right hand side. Click on that. Uh, hamburger menu, go to import. I have mine saved to my downloads folder. I'm going to click on the ultrasonic sensor. Oh, okay. I already have it. That's why. Okay. So I can probably just go to my bin, but if you don't have it, you follow that section there. There's my ultrasonic sensor. Put that on there. And I also need an LED. So I'm going to go to the search and I'm going to, well, I might as well grab the resistor first because I already have that there. Then I'm going to take that out and put LED, press enter, search. And that should come up. And there we go. That's the LED. I'm going to flip this around the other way. So it's a bit easier to connect. Flip horizontal. All right. So that's it. Connect that there. Uh, let's move this down one. And then this can go to ground. 
this can go all the way down here so that's connected to ground now now let's try and connect the ultrasonic sensor the first one says vcc vcc should ideally come from either pin 39 or pin 40 so i'm going to do pin 40 whichever either one should work because they both give five volts i'm going to now connect that one to pin 40 there then after that i do the other one is trigger i'm going to leave these two for now because then i can select the gpio pin i want ground i can bring all the way down here and then trigger i'm going to maybe use pins uh what's this let's double check on our data sheet because we need to always refer to that that's going to be gpio 14 and 15 that should be perfectly fine so click on here, GPIO 14 can go to, let's say that one there. Let's do this, let's make it neat. And that one can go to GPIO 15. And that's the circuit diagram, oh, that's the circuit diagram completely finished. I'm gonna screenshot this as well. Now you don't just create these diagrams, you have to screenshot them and put them into your circuit. And even beyond that, you have to explain the connection. So that's one section actually left off. So let me correct that now. And to do that, you simply, um, let's say you describe how things are connected to the Raspberry Pi itself. So here I'm going to call this one uh, pin connection description, maybe. And I know that uh, from the Raspberry Pi Pico. So we're going to do LED first. And then after that, we can do uh, ultrasonic sensor. And from the LED, we say pin three from the Pi Pico goes to uh, the anode of the LED, sorry, the cathode. Pin 21 from the Pi Pico goes to the uh, 330 ohm or 220 ohm, whatever resistor you've decided to use, 330 ohm ray SISTOR to the anode of the LED. And then for the ultrasonic, I know that uh, VCC, so pin 40 from the Pico goes to uh, the VCC of the sensor and I can say pin three from the Pico goes to ground of the of the sensor. Then the other two were pins, uh, what was that again? 19 and 20. So pin 19 from Pico goes to the trigger of the sensor. Pin 20 from the Pico goes to echo i think it's called echo of the sensor and that's it so this is how you would connect everything and this is how you would describe it now this is something that's 100 percent needed for activity three in the exam so you do not skip it have your circuit diagram you have your pin connections the last thing now is to actually have the code working so i'm going to go grab that and come back this is a code i grabbed from one of those websites and let me go through each one of them so i said from machine import pin and again this imports a pin functionality so this means i can connect external devices to the raspberry pi whether it be input or output next i import u time so i can sleep the trigger variable is set to pin 16 and that pin is set to an output pin the echo is set to pin 17 and that's set to um, a pin in. Because remember, we can do input or output. So that's the great thing about the GPIO. They're not fixed to either input or output. We can change it. They've said uh, define ultra. What ultra is, is just the name of a function. You can call this whatever you want. So you can call this um, ultrasonic sensor or um, parking sensor function, whatever you want. I say trigger low. Uh, this sets the trigger value off. I sleep for two microseconds. Then I say trigger high trigger high just turns that thing on turns the pulse on then i sleep for another five microseconds then i turn the trigger off again now this is where we have while loops i say while echo dot value is equal to zero signal off so if the value of the echo so the thing receiving the signal if that's equal to zero turn the signal off if that signal being received is equal to one turn the signal back on that's all that this is saying and then time pass, so the amount of time it takes for the signal to go on and off, this is how we calculate how, um, how much time it's taken to 
beam the signal and to receive an echo and that's how we that's then where we um, get the speed of sound and then we can work everything out so time pass equals signal on versus signal off the distance is going to be equal time passed multiplied uh, by this value here divided by two because it has to go there and get back um, then I print object at distance centimeters so that's all I do and once I finish with that, I say an infinite while loop and I say run that function forever, sleep for one second, run that function forever, sleep for one second and keep going back and forth, back and back and forth, back and forth. That's all I'm doing for this. So again, I'm back to my circuit. Now I'm going to simply run the code on my PC, put something in front of this to block it to see what signal we can get. So when I click run on here, it's reading the values in as 2000 centimeters but, but that's because there's nothing in front of it i'm going to put my hand here now and that value has now dropped to roughly seven centimeters so this is how we get the sensor working the next step is to actually do our if statements to turn the led on so i'm going to go back to my code i'm going to set the led up and then when i set the led up i'm going to do my if statements inside there and uh, if the value is let's say less than i think i said 15 turn the onboard LED on. If it's greater than 15, then turn the onboard LED off. Right, so now I've added the logic for my program. So now all this should do, I'm gonna click run. What should happen if the distance, the value from the distance sensor is less than 15 centimeters, let's say, the LED should go on. So, th so this might tell someone to stop reversing. If the, otherwise, just keep low, so stay off. So 15 centimeters is like my trigger point. Once I get to 15 centimeters, the LED should just come on. So here I've got the ultrasonic sensor set up. I do have a magnetic sensor here as well, but this is not being run at the moment, so please ignore that. I'm gonna press F5 on my keyboard now, pressing F5, and there we have 144 centimeters. Now I'm gonna put in front of that this box here. So I'm gonna put the box here, and I'm getting 15 centimeters now. Okay, so once I go below this, this is actually really good. So I've somehow managed to perfectly guesstimate where 15 centimeters is. I'm going to go up to 16-ish, 16, 17. Now I'm going to go down. So keep an eye on the LED somewhere on this side here. I'm going to keep going down. And once this drops below 15, there we go. LED comes on straight away. Let me bend this cable so you can see it a bit better. So that's the LED shining there. All right, so I'm going to move this beyond 15 again. LED should go off straight away because I have no weight. There's no weight under my if statement. So it should just go on and off as soon as it can detect that it's under 15. Let me move back up. And there we go. LED comes on again. Move back out. LED should go off. All right, so that's it. Ultrasonic sensor working.